Welcome back to the Couch GM Podcast. A great episode today as I have on Colt Emerson, who is a shortstop prospect in the Seattle Mariners organization. He was drafted by the Seattle Mariners with the 22nd overall pick in the first round of the 2023 MLB draft. And one of the youngest guys in this draft class, he excelled in his first exposure in pro baseball. As in 24 games across rookie ball and low A Modesto, he would bat 374 with a 496 on base percentage, a 550 slug, and a 1.045 OPS. Over a 1,000 OPS at any level is incredible. Add to it the fact that he was just 17 at the time, and he's one of the top prospects in the Mariners organization. To support the Couch GM brand, make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. And if you prefer the audio-only version, you can find that on any major podcast platform. Also, make sure to sign up for the Couch GM newsletter so that you never miss a thing. And with that, let's get into the podcast. So first off, Colt, really appreciate you uh, taking the time today. Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure to be on here. Absolutely. I want to get into, you know, current day and your experience in the, in the minor league so far, but I want to go back to your childhood, your upbringing, just kind of how, you know, how you got to where you are today. So if you want to walk us through your upbringing, how you got into sports, into baseball and what that looks like. Yeah. Uh, you know, I started off, uh, baseball as a young age, you know, uh, my parents put me in playing. That was the first sport I played in. And, uh, started off playing and then I went and played basketball and football growing up through but uh I actually started playing baseball with my brother who is three or four years older than me he's three years older than me so I think because of that being with the older kids <clears throat> helped with I mean getting along with the older guys and I mean just up my level because I'm playing against guys that are better than me. They're stronger than me, faster than me, just because they're older than me already. I think that played a role in uh, how I perform in professional baseball. But I mean, coming up through, uh, man, I I played travel baseball ever since I can remember, playing against the best competition wherever I was, and I I just had fun with it really. And then uh, tiny middle school, and I knew. Like if I wanted to play high school football, I was going to get destroyed if I, I didn't like get stronger, get faster. Like I was just going to get pummeled. But eighth grade, played football, freshman year, start of high school, uh, which that's when COVID was. So I didn't even get to play my freshman year of high school baseball with my brother, who was a senior at the time. So, yeah. so but I, I got to play football with him, which was really fun. And then uh, I only played like half the season freshman year because I, I mean I was a small freshman and play much and then sophomore through junior year sophomore and junior year I mean I played I started and I, I love football there was nothing better than Friday night football like that was, that was the most fun ever like that was great and then obviously playing baseball up through having a good time that was actually the first time I played with uh my friends like my, like my hometown friends I never played uh travel ball really around like my hometown like I would always be in Georgia I played for team elite out of Georgia so I'd always be down in Georgia Alabama Florida playing with guys down there so having the chance to play with the hometown guys was amazing and I I cherished every moment of that but uh yeah I think uh coming up through playing travel ball down south really helped out in my not only recruiting but uh being able to be drafted and because I I don't think there's not too many coming to Cambridge too many scouts coming to Cambridge Ohio to watch guys play so so getting out was a good thing and experiencing other things experience something new so now that's helped me now I go to Arizona and I'm by myself living by myself it's easy now because I did it when I was younger you know so yeah having all those experiences has really helped me in a lot of ways coming up through. Absolutely. So going back a little bit, um, I watched an, another interview of you and, uh, it sounds like you grow up and, or you grew up and you're currently on a 120 acre farm in Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you have a, a bit of a facility, like a batting cage. Do you have a baseball field out there too, that you've been able to work with? Oh, no, no, no baseball <laughs> field, but, uh, no, we, we got a cage. We, we got a, we got a great setup. We got a, uh, our house and then our, we have a barn right next, uh, we got a barn right next to it and uh it's got the cage it's got a workout facility in there all really super nice i spend most of my time out there but uh 
Yeah, they got a really good spot out here. And plus, I mean, we have the freedom with 120 acres to do whatever we want. So it's, it's, yeah. it's really yeah. nice. I'm really thankful for it. So growing up, uh, it looks like you're about an hour and a half, two hours from Pittsburgh, and that was the closest major city. Um, Ohio, uh, Cincinnati looks to be about like three hours. Was there a certain team yeah. growing up that you followed more than than the others? Yeah, like like if we would go to a game, we would either go to a Pirates game because they're about an hour and forty five, or we would go to a, a Cleveland game because they're about two and a half hours. But you know, yeah. PNC is a beautiful stadium, and like now, if I would go to a game, I'd go to the Pirates because just the the stadium, the atmosphere is just beautiful, and it's a great spot. Yeah, absolutely. So, and then, were there any players? Yeah growing up that you looked after yeah i mean like like every other shortstop i mean i, I love Derek jeter you know like I, I idolized him and and uh just the way he played the game and the way he led his team and the way he won like i mean like every kid like that was the guy that i wanted to be and that was the guy that i wanted to strive to act like and play like yeah Derek jeter cool so now getting back into your playing career. Um, so you mentioned that growing up, you played in various travel ball leagues pretty much from the beginning. You played up with your brother uh, for a few years. Walk us through high school. Um, I, I saw that your junior year of, of uh, high school for football, you made the first team, all Ohio team for football. So did yeah. you stop playing yeah. football after junior year? Yeah, yeah. I stopped playing football after junior year because there was stuff like like the USA team in the uh fall and jupiter all the tournaments i had to do in the fall that uh ultimately were the reason i I really got drafted so high like i I don't do any of those tournaments then i probably i'm probably not put on the map and nobody would probably knows who i am so i mean unfortunately not playing football was hard but at the end of the day like like this is my baseball is my pathway it's not football you know sometimes you got to sacrifice to get what you want, you know what? I mean, I had to sacrifice, and it was tough at the time. But you know, I mean, baseball is my pathway, and I'm not gonna trade it for anything else. Yeah, sometimes doors have to close so that others can open. And so, with playing for Team USA, it, it looks like you played third base when you're on Team USA. You batted like 360 during that time. Yeah, third Walk base. Walk us through that that experience. Something like that. Start yeah, to yeah. finish. Yeah, you know. Um, Playing with the USA, crush your chest. Playing for your country is probably one of the greatest honors you can have. You know, I, I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. Like that was probably the most fun I've had in baseball in a while. And uh, just being on a team with the top guy in the country, especially at that age, like it's amazing. Uh, how we can all come together and how we can win a world championship for the first time on U.S. soil. Get the A-team U level. Uh, I mean that that whole experience like every year I've I've been doing USA events since I was 12 years old 10 11 12 years old and every year that was my favorite one because because they didn't treat you like USA they didn't treat you like oh you're a 12 treat you like hey here's this itinerary you're going to stay with a roommate they treat you like a college kid and yeah. if I didn't have those experiences at that age then I don't know what I'd be like now not having those experiences, not knowing what to do when I'm by my, you know? So yeah. uh, just that whole 18 team experience is winning gold with the people and the friendships. So you, uh, so you committed to playing at Auburn at some point in your high school career. Can you walk us through the process of being, starting to be recruited by colleges and then, you know, seeing the pro scouts and all that? Um, at what point did you commit to Auburn? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it was funny. It was funny. The first time that a college came and watched me, I, I was, uh, it was my eighth grade summer going into freshman year and they came to watch me and I pitched, I, I threw six, I threw six innings and I topped out like 82 <laughs> and I, I didn't even play shortstop. And it was like, they came to watch me, but I, I'm not a pitcher. <laughs> and I, I pitched the whole game, which was super funny. <laughs> and that was probably the last time I ever pitched in my life. But, uh, <laughs> But no, after that, uh, it's kind of crazy, like showing up as a, I'm a young for my grade, so 14 years old, as, and there's like college scouts, there's uh, DC schools coming to watch you play. Like 
was insane. Like uh, now that I'm thinking back on it, like that's crazy. By the time I didn't think much of it because I was like regular people, and you know, you try to do the same thing every day. But uh, it was actually insane. And then I took visits, not like official visits or unofficial visits. Like I would go, and my parents would, if we'd have a tournament in Alabama. Uh, and I was talking to Auburn at the time, I would go down and just go and visit campus on my own without the coach, without anything. And I, we would just visit because that was important to me to, to know that, uh, to visit it and know that maybe this is the spot I want to just check it out and uh, check out the campus, check out other stuff, go into facilities, like just check it out on my own. That was very important. We did that with several schools, but uh you know, it, it was a long process, but eventually I picked Auburn just because I had a great relationship with the coaches. I mean, campus really fit me, education really fit me, and I knew that if I would eventually go there that I knew that we could definitely win at some point, and I could develop there and become a professional baseball player out of there if that did happen. But, um, you know, it was kind of a whirlwind of the recruiting process, but you know, I was, I felt like I was mature about it and took my time. I didn't jump at the first school that uh, offered me and I just took my time and figured out what place fit me best. Absolutely. Um, a bit of a tangent. So let's say that you did go to college. What would you be studying in college and what, what kind of interest do you have outside of baseball? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? We, we probably have to figure that out. <laughs> when the time came because i mean i, I went down I, I was in i was enrolled in summer school at auburn and even at that time i was like trying to figure out a major i was going to major and i was like man i i don't even know like right like uh, i mean i mean i i mean i really don't know but baseball is just number one and you know and if if that were if i were to go to college then i'd i'd have to figure something out <laughs> and, I, and I didn't figure anything out until after the draft. So, which it ended the way it did. And, you know, I didn't have to pick my major, which is good. Hey, you're majoring in baseball, which is your favorite. So that's, that's good. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that, that's right. This is my education. And I got a 4.0 right now. There you go. Straight A's. So now moving yeah. into the, uh, the entire sorry, MLB sorry. draft process and walk us through the MLB combine, your experience with the different workouts, the interviews throughout that process and leading up to the draft. Yeah. The, the combine was great. I, I had a great time, you know, that was basically, I didn't do, I didn't do any of the workouts or anything like that. I just did interviews and it was basically, I think I, I think I ended up having like 20 some interviews, but it was basically 20 interviews of me talking baseball, which I loved mm -hmm. it. And I mean, I mean, what's better than talking about baseball? So right. it was easy, you know, guys try to hammer with you questions, but I mean, I'm pretty good at, I guess, talking to people. So it was, it ended up being easy for me. I, I just had a good time with it. I, I wasn't too stressed about anything because I knew if I went in and myself then somebody would like me, you know, I didn't care about right. if anybody was hated upon me or anything like that. I was, I'm going to be in there, go in there and be myself. Because at the end of the day, like, if it happened where nobody liked me in there, I mean, I to college, you know, I still committed to a place that I would love to go to. So I was stressed out about anything. And I, I just had fun with it. And I really took advantage of the time that I had talking to all the GMs, all the assistant GMs, all the scouts, you know, and I, I just had fun with it, really. Yeah. So now walk us through draft day. Um, it sounds like you were pretty calm and collected with the entire process up to that point. Did you have some butterflies? Like, you know, what, who's going to take me? Did you expect to go that first day? Uh, you know, I, I don't like to get, I don't like to get, uh, how do I say it? I don't want to, I don't want to get my hopes up too crazy. Cause you know, when you get your hopes up too high and then it doesn't happen and then it's like, uh, yeah. That sucks. So I didn't get my hopes up. Uh, it was just a regular day. I went golfing that morning. Uh, I shot pretty terrible. Typical, <laughs> typical, typical baseball player. And then, uh, and then I ended up. We played 18 holes. So we ended up getting done about an hour or so before the draft. And then I got changed and went down. We had a draft party at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, which was 
a great time and I uh, had it in the back room and then ended up watching it. You know, I got to see some of my boys go first, Blake Mitchell, uh, Bryce Eldridge, they went first before me and I love seeing them go. And then, then came the time where I got told I was eventually could go. So, so I was like, okay, it might happen. It might happen. And then I finally got the phone call and I was like, oh, wow, this is going to happen. And then, and then Tiago came out and called my name and I was like, wow, like I couldn't, I couldn't imagine a more perfect, I guess, draft day, really like having Tiago call my name the draft being in Seattle, being drafted by the Mariners. And like at that pick, like it, it just couldn't happen more perfect. And I, and it, it was so surreal. Like, I, like even thinking about it now, it's kind of like, like, it's just so surreal that, that this is real life now that I've been dreaming about this since I was a young kid. And now I'm actually in it. I'm playing, I played low A last year. Like it's weird. Just to think about it, like it's so surreal that I'm just living my childhood dream. Absolutely, I talked about uh, with Ty Pete about this and uh, walk us through your first trip to Seattle and what it was like to see Ty and to see Johnny, to see the the players on the Seattle Mariners currently, you know, taking BP on the field for the first time in T-Mobile Park. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a, it was, never been to Seattle before. And doing it with those guys, like, well, Johnny wasn't there, but it was me and Ty, and like doing it with him was a super fun time. You know, not being not being the only one in that position made it easier. And uh, going up there and meeting meeting uh, uh, a Scott Service, uh, all those guys, like, it was such a great time. You know, seeing Julio, talking to Julio, Colton Wong, talking to Colton Wong in the cages. Ty France, JP Crawford, like guys are super cool. Cal Raleigh, like they were all super cool guys and they said, what's up? We said, what's up? But, you know, it was crazy seeing, uh, going up in the Space Needle, seeing the gum wall, seeing the uh, market down there. Just a great time catching the fish. Thank God I caught the fish. I was, yeah. I was nervous about that. I didn't want to be the first one to drop the fish. But, um, you know, I, I had a lot of fun. I, I had a lot of fun, and I'm I'm thankful that I got to do that at the time we did. And uh, I'm just glad that it all happened, uh, happened perfectly. And uh, I'm glad I got to meet the people I did. And what we did in Seattle was great, and I, I had a lot of fun. Yeah. So then you leave Seattle. Do you head straight down to Arizona and get, get in, you know, put on your cleats and get to work? Yeah, that's, that's when, that's when the real fun started. You know, I I love the media and stuff and doing all that fun stuff. But when I can strap up the cleats and go and do the work, that's when, that's when it's, that's, that's what I love. That's what I love being able to go out there on the field and take ground balls every day, hit every day. Like I I just, I just loved it to start with. Like we got down there. I met the other guys that got drafted with me super cool guys everybody is and then went straight to it you know and then it took about i don't know two weeks before we actually started playing and then we actually got told we weren't going to play until like the end end of the season and then we just kept asking keep asking me and ty and johnny kept asking 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 and aiden and we find they finally were like all right whatever you, you guys are good to go like and then we started playing and then and like you, you know we we didn't know what to expect going into it because like I mean, none of us have been pro baseball players before. So we went into it and I mean, my first game hit a home run first pitch. I, I, I don't, I didn't even know, like, I'm not even that I'm not even a home run hitter. Like, and then it just happened. And I was like, wow. And then right after, right after the first AB it was kind of just like, Hey, this is baseball. It's time to go. Like time to win. I'm going to go to the next game, just pitch by pitch and just doesn't really change. I mean, it's all baseball at the end of the day. And that's how I think about it. Yeah. So you started uh, rookie ball in Arizona and then you get uh, sent over to Modesto. And so walk us through, yeah, playing at Modesto, your first, I don't know what the biggest crowd you played in before that was, but you started playing some in front of some fans that know what's go that know what's going on. 
you end up winning the championship with Modesto. What was that experience like? Yeah, that was absolutely insane. I've never been on a team like that good. Like everybody was just hot. Everybody was just hitting the ball. Everybody was fielding the ball. Like we all like came together. I, I don't know what it was, but I mean, we got in there. They were already on a hot streak. And then we came in and just kept it rolling, you know. Uh, and then coming in and then uh, being a few games back, we kept watching the uh, the record and we kept getting closer and closer and closer. We just kept winning, kept winning. And then we were uh, up against like uh, – Fresno in the record and then we ended up playing them and then we clenched after three games I think and then after that playoffs I mean it was such a it was such a great time it was such a great first season I mean I, I couldn't have asked for a perfect more perfect season first half season I guess but uh I mean I made a lot of cool friends a lot of great guys on that team and decided to go out go back actually here in a few months and get back to it. That's for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, what are the uh, living conditions and the daily grind of the first step of the minor leagues like, you know, playing a Modesto? Oh, geez. I mean, I mean, we, we got the basic needs. You got a machine, you got coaches that care, will throw you BP, that you ask them anything, they will answer it. We got the trainers, really great trainers. Blake, awesome. Uh, we got a clubhouse. Like I, I'm a simple guy. Like I don't, I need a cage. Yeah. I need a guy to throw. Like I just need VP and then somebody hit ground balls. Like, like that's all I did when I was younger. Like I didn't have anything fancy here. So, so, I mean, I had no complaints with Modesto. Like we stayed in a super nice hotel. We Uber to the field, got to the field and we got to play baseball at the end of the day in front of great fans. So, I mean, I mean, there's stories out there about, how bad minor league baseball is but like i had a great first experience because i came into it positive and just came in and, and did what i did and do what i do and i was just myself and that was good enough and it, i mean i i had a great time with modesto and rookie ball too. awesome made a lot of good friends uh playing at modesto yourself and ty pete technically are drafted as shortstops so do you guys switch time between shortstop third base were you playing more third base what did that look that look like no i actually i play, i played zero third base it was really i played probably i don't even know how you want to say it, but i uh in rookie ball me and ty kind of like he played second base i played shortstop he played shortstop uh, but i played second base he played third base too i didn't play any third base okay but then when we got to modesto we have michael Royo, who i played shortstop stop i don't even know uh, i would say most of the time especially in the playoffs and uh michael played second base and then brock played third but at the start uh ty was playing third base second base and some short but uh I, yeah I, I never really played any third base so which people were thought that when i got the pro ball i was gonna play third base but you know i stuck at shortstop and just did whatever I mean, I, I really just went out there and didn't worry about anything. I just, if I was in the lineup card, I was happy. And they were there wherever they put me, they put me. So I just did what I could do and, you know, had fun out there. Yeah, absolutely. So do they kind of fill you in on their game plan moving forward with, uh, you know, where you're going to be getting your reps in? I mean, you're playing shortstop the entire time. Uh, level up, you got Cole Young. There's Ty Pete, obviously. Do they kind of fill you in on that or that you just kind of look at the lineup like all right we're going shortstop today yeah you know i i don't really i don't really ask i don't really I, i'm just i just go out there i show up and i get ready like i'm playing shortstop and then if i'm playing second base and then i go practice before the game second base and i go do it you know i, I don't i don't really worry about too much about where i'm playing or where i'm batting or this and that like i kind of just go out there and I mean, I'm a versatile player. Like USA, I played third base. I played second base. I played shortstop. I played right field a little bit in the exhibition games. Like, I, I, I played everywhere, and I have the experience playing everywhere. Like, I even played first base at one point for the USA team, like, in, like, uh, exhibition games. Like, I, I literally played everywhere. So, 
like I went out there every day and saw my name on the card and was happy. Like I, I didn't really care about anything. I didn't care about what number they gave me. Like I didn't care about anything. I just went out there and played really was happy. Yeah, absolutely. So heading into 2024, what's your main focus for development this off season and then uh, heading into next year? Yeah, uh, I, I really worked on worked hard on uh, getting stronger, changing my body, uh, working on mobility, hip mobility, arm mobility, uh, strengthening my arm, getting my arm, especially getting my arm prepped and ready for the season. And then obviously working on speed, working on swing, fat, just, just getting better at everything, like anything in my game that I can get better at, I'm working on getting better at. And that includes speed, generally speed, strength, bat speed, uh, mobility, just prepping for the season, just getting ready. You know, I, I got a pretty good routine. I got a pretty good uh, workout program pretty good routine in the cage. So I'm hoping that as the years go on, I can learn more and more and hopefully get a better routine, better workout plan. Like I'm just working on getting better through it all. Yeah. And then I saw an interview with you and Joe Doyle before the draft. And you mentioned that you would classify yourself as boring. Good. Can you just walk us through uh, what boring good is? Somebody who goes out there and is available every day, who goes in there and plays a position, makes every routine play, you know, gets on bat, gets on base every single time. Like, I'm not a guy who's going to go out there and hit one 500 feet, and everybody's going to be like, wow, like, this guy is crazy exciting to watch. Like, I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to be an everyday guy who goes out there and goes two for two for four with two base hits, base hitting a double, a few walks, stolen base here and there. Like, like just a consistent guy who goes out there who's not, like – I, I, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, go out there and not, like, I don't know, hit a home run and flip in the air. Like, I'm going to go out there and be the same every day and, like, be a consistent guy. Emotionally, a good teammate. Like, and I, I'm just, like, I'm, I'm just on a plain level, same level, no, not too high and low every single day. And you can ask my teammates, like, that's how I am every day. And, I think that's what makes me who I am. And I, I haven't changed any of it because this is the way I am and this is the way I play. So this is how I work. Absolutely. And then uh, towards the end here, asking a, a few questions from fans, I put up a poll. Um, first off, what is the most memorable baseball experience of your career so far? Huh, that's easy. Probably – it's probably a tie before be, between hitting uh, hitting a home run, my first ever professional pitch. <laughs> it's probably a tie between that and winning winning uh, the California League. I mean, like that was absolutely insane. But like, I mean, winning a championship, there's nothing like it. I mean, like it's that was probably the most fun I've had playing baseball. Such a great time. Yeah. Follow-up question to that, what would you – a game-saving defensive play or a walk-off home run? Oh, walk-off home run. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, just hit it. <laughs> just being being down and, and hitting the tank team, like, I mean, like, that's every little kid's dream. And then who's your favorite big leaguer currently? And then who do you yourself um, – who would you say you profile as who is currently playing in the big leagues? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I'd say I'd model myself after anyone in particular. Like, I can say, like, me and DJ LeMahieu have a, I guess, have a similar style of play, even though he's a right-handed batter. Like, he's a bigger guy, plays a bunch of positions who – consistently hits especially a silver slugger year i like watching him because i can see myself as that but you know as starting like i don't really compare myself to any player because i've realized everybody's different and if i start doing what if i start doing what jp crawford's doing it's probably not going to work for me i'm just going to do what works for me best and find out what works for me 
and what's going to make me the best player I can be and however long that takes me, takes me. So just being myself really and not comparing myself to anybody has really helped me. Absolutely. Do you have a favorite big leaguer currently, or is it just kind of watching some baseball when you can? You know, I, 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 uh, I love watching, I love watching like a Kyle Schwarber because he might bat 200, but he's going to hit a tank. Like that's exciting to watch. Like, and Kyle Schwarber, he played, he played in Cincinnati. He lives, uh, he lived in Cincinnati. He went to Indiana. Like he's a Midwest guy. So I been like, I mean, he, he's going to, he's going to hit a nuke and it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, that's awesome. And he, he's definitely not boring good. He's, I mean, it's light tower power or strikeout basically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. And, then, oh, yeah. That's and then, uh, how was the stress and pressure after being drafted? It seems like you're a really easy going guy. So I don't know if, if you're, if there's really much pressure that you put on yourself, but how do you manage the potential pressure or stress after being drafted? You know, uh, I, don't, I don't, I try to not let things, uh, not, not try to make things said before. Like I get out there and after the first day, like I realize it's just baseball, you know, I don't, that's why I feel like things didn't really speed up for me during my first half seasons. Cause I mean, I, I'm, I don't get too high. I don't get too low. And I just went out there and tried to be myself. You know, I knew that if I uh, was myself, I was going to be good enough for anybody. And that was going to help the team. So I knew that if I was and just did what I could do. And that was going to be good enough. And that's how I go about, that's how I go about most things. I mean, as long as you're yourself, you're good. And then who are you most excited to play with in the coming years? Man, I, I, I feel like I got I to gotta, I gotta say Julio, right? I mean, that guy is electric. Like, like it's crazy. I got that. He seems like, I, I mean, when I met him, I only talked to him for a few seconds. But, but like, he seems like a really great guy, a really guy, good guy to uh, – Really fun guy to play with, you know. I'm just excited if I get that chance, and uh, I mean, I would love to play with him. Like, uh, seems like a super fun guy to play with if I get that chance. Absolutely, that's a pretty easy answer, especially in the Mariners organization. And then, um, what's your favorite thing to do outside of baseball? I live on a farm, so I love to hunt. I love to fish. I'm a, I'm a big fisherman. When I when I first got down to Arizona, the first thing me and Johnny did, we went to uh, we went to Bass Pro Shops and we bought uh, we bought fishing poles, and we went fishing a lot in Arizona. <laughs> it was a fun time, like like just just being out there and just getting your mind off things and casting a line. Like there's really nothing better than that, you know. And I, I love hanging around, sitting around, talking about stuff with my friends, like like outside of baseball. You know, there's that getaway, the outdoors part, and just sitting around talking to people, you know, talking to friends, really. Into that time. Awesome. Well, uh, Colt, really appreciate your time. Really excited to see you progress throughout the minor leagues. And from myself and all the Mariners fans, uh, we wish you the best of luck next year and look forward to, to seeing where you go. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate that.